Good evening, everybody. Welcome to our Post-16 Careers Week Tuesday night event um, for studying A-levels, a bit of a college and a sixth form open evening webinar. Um, I'm Caroline Patton. I'll be your host for this evening. And this evening's event is hosted on behalf of Stockport Council as part of a suite of events and activities that are happening for years 10 to 13 students as part of this year's digital digital post-16 careers week event um, so first things first thank you very much for joining us um, on this cold and slightly damp Tuesday evening I'm sure lots of you are kind of cramming in after school activities and dinner and homework and all sorts of things and have been busy over the last couple of weeks with open events and other activities so um, you're very very welcome tonight um, just a little bit of housekeeping before we get started um, tonight's event is a team's live webinar which means that you can see all of us as presenters but we can't see you your cameras and microphones are switched off obviously with the event being geared towards young people students parents and carers so for safeguarding purposes we can't see you at all however we would love to hear from you as part of tonight's event and you can get in touch with us throughout the course of the evening by submitting your questions in our Q&A box so somewhere on your screen whether you are on a laptop, a desktop, tablet or mobile phone this evening you will have a little um, button with a couple of um, speech bubbles and a question mark inside that says Q&A on it. At any point to, uh, throughout the course of this evening you can submit your questions within that Q&A chat on any topic or for any of our panellists specifically and you can also post them anonymously so if you don't want us to see your name uh, but you do want to ask a question and have a, a dedicated reply tonight you can pop that question in our Q&A box. Um, so before we get started with um, tonight's webinar I just want to explain a little bit about the purpose of tonight and what we're going to cover and how it's going to be structured um, and also to give people a little bit of time to jump into the call. I'm aware that not everybody is 100% familiar with Teams and there will be people who are joining tonight, leaving things a little bit to the last minute and hurriedly downloading Teams apps or wondering how on earth they sign in. So I want to give them a little bit of time to, to still join before we get on to the main part of tonight's Q&A session. Um, so as I mentioned, um, this event is hosted on behalf of Stockport Council. My name is Caroline and I'm your host for this evening. I'm going to come on to introduce each of our panellists in a second. But the purpose of tonight is to find out a little bit more about studying A-levels. So it's ideally designed for years 10 and 11 students, um, year 11 students predominantly, who will be actively attending open events at the moment and thinking about heading off to college or sixth form college in September 2025. So what we want to look at tonight is bring together some of the questions that you might have had either through attending open events or maybe you've not been able to do so as of yet and you want to get a bit of the lowdown or they might be follow-up questions having been along to colleges and sixth forms the real nitty-gritty of what maybe you didn't ask on the night or you wish you'd asked or things that you really need to know now you've maybe made most of your decision you're halfway there and you want to get to the point where you're submitting those online applications forms. Um, so tonight we're joined um, by um, admissions teams and head of careers and head of sixth for um, some of the um, more well-known and, and largest sixth forms um, colleges around Stockport and the greater Manchester area um, that your um, young people are most likely to attend next year. And we're going to be putting a series of questions to them um, that run through the whole host of things that you might want to know if you're preparing for studying A-levels. So starting with that decision making process from which college to sit form to choose to which subjects to choose, um, what to ask at an open day, um, what the entry requirements are through to the application process and what goes into that, the decision making side of things and when you can expect to hear back, um, as well as what happens on results day right through to enrolment next September and what that looks like as well. 
So as I say, at any point during tonight, if you've got a question that you want to know, that you think that we've maybe skipped over, or that you want to ask that specific panellist, please do pop that in our Q&A chat. Just click on that Q&A button. You can post it anonymously, and we will try to get through as many questions as you can. So that brings me on to introducing tonight's um, panellists. Um, so I'm just going to um, choose them because they don't know what order they appear in on my screen. Um, so if we start with you, John, if you just want to un unmute and tell us who you are, your job role and where you're from tonight. Thank you, Caroline. So uh, good evening, everyone. Thank you very much for joining us on this special uh, event. Uh, so my name is John Morrison. I'm Head of Careers at Aquinas College. We're based in Stockport. Um, the college uh, is um, offers a variety of different level three courses, um, A levels and B techs predominantly, and I'll be giving some insights tonight. Great, thanks, John. Um, Neil, thanks, Caroline. Hi, everyone. Welcome. I'm Neil Allen. I'm head of academic studies at the Cheadle College and Marple Six Form College. Again, located in in Stockport area, and again, we've got a range of, of A levels particular and some vocational and T-level courses. Great, thanks Neil. Helen? Good evening everybody. I'm Helen Roberts from Hazel Grove Sixth Form, which is part of the Loris Trust, um, which covers also in the local area Cheadle Hume Sixth Form. So I'm speaking on behalf of Loris Trust in some ways this evening. Um, I'm Assistant Director of Sixth Form and that's me, thank you. Great, thank you. Danny? Hi everyone, I'm Danny Price. I'm one of the uh, senior managers from Loretto and uh, we're based in uh, just outside of the centre of the city in Hume. Thanks Danny. Olivia? Good evening everyone, my name is Olivia Kvana. I am the Marketing and School Liaison Manager at Zavarian College. We are not far from Loretto, we're, again we're just outside of the city over in Rushome. Great, thank you. And we're also joined tonight by Richard. Hi, I'm Richard Mortimer. I'm Head of Economy, Work and Skills at Stockport Council. Uh, so my team are responsible for commissioning uh, this uh, week's uh, set of events. Uh, and also, obviously, the council has an interest in making sure that we've got the, the best, highest quality offer for our young people uh, and that our employers also benefit from uh, a fantastic talent pool. Right, thank you. And thank you to you all for joining us tonight. For anyone who's joined a little bit late, you've not missed anything yet. We're just about to get started. We'd finished with the housekeeping and now we're going to kick off with the first part of our webinar. And as I said, we're going to run through some of those questions that you might not have had the opportunity to ask at open events or you really want to know now if you're in a position to start submitting some of those applications about studying A-levels in September 2025 or the year after if your young person is in year 10 currently. So I'm going to come to John at Aquinas um, Sixth Form first of all to talk a little bit about that decision making process. Um, so obviously at the point when you're studying your GCSEs and you've got all these different pathways to choose from, lots of different options, more choices than you've ever had at any other stage of your career before. It's quite a difficult point to kind of leave that comfortable secondary education environment where lots of children have been for um, you know five years, very secure group of friends they know the teacher they're the top of the school so making that decision can feel a little bit overwhelming and there's lots and lots of things to consider um, so I wondered if you could maybe talk us through what that decision making process should look like some of the things that you would recommend that parents carrots and students take into account first of all when thinking what to study obviously we're talking tonight about a levels but i mean in terms of the subjects and how many of those to choose and how to make that decision but also in terms of the college and sixth form itself right okay so um i guess in terms of you know with my hat on as um head of careers i think the the most important thing really is to to take your time to really um, have a look at the different types of institutions um, along our, alongside ourselves in terms of with standalone sixth form, consider where you're coming from if you've got a sixth form as well. So it's the atmosphere and the environment uh, is a, a really important for you to consider. Um, coming to any of our open events can really give you that sort of insight into what it could potentially be like because 
on hand on open events. You'll have uh, teaching staff, you'll have uh, student ambassadors, as well as lots of different talks and, and other sort of members of staff to kind of give you that sense of, of what the uh, actual college feel uh, is itself. So I can not recommend it enough in terms of actually going to see it and and uh, sort of uh, uh, visualising it for yourself. I think the idea at this point is um, to keep options open to really do consider what are your sort of interests at the moment and what we offer at Aquinas College is about 50 subject areas um, ranging from things that are already um, in the uh, GCSE uh, profile so um, sort of familiar courses which you're doing but then there'll be new ones and alongside ourselves in the other colleges there'll be new courses potentially for yourself such as studying law psychology um, and social sciences so it opens up uh, possibilities to consider what's next so the sort of advice as well is to really start to think about well, what do I want to, to do in the near future after um, potentially studying with our level three courses students progress on to higher education university opportunities as well as apprenticeships and degree level apprenticeships and our courses are supposed to develop skills to uh, progress on to those uh, particular areas so also to consider features that the college provides and and what do you know going back to the open events what do the teachers say what do the students say about what's it like to actually study uh, a two-year program a level three program um to also consider what the college offers as well alongside. So at Aquinas College, I think what we do is we're trying to support students who um, want to um, develop their personal development skills. And we offer alongside our a, a curriculum offer, we offer a strong pastoral um, program, a two-year program where you'll be uh, supported with a tutor. Uh, alongside that, uh, there will be a senior tutor and that'll provide advice, guidance, coaching, mentoring throughout the year, as well as a structured tutorial program. Ourselves, in terms of careers, we've got um, a number of different tutorial programs to help explore that further, because you might be coming to a college setting and not know exactly what you want to do, and that's absolutely fine. I think it's to uh, kind of consider what you could do based on the courses uh, that you're interested in. Our website, uh, it's, it's quite new um, uh, in terms of we've had updates and that's got information about the course content as well as potential careers progression um, and uh, yeah just to kind of finish off in terms of the extracurricular that could be on offer as well so uh, again we want students to kind of thrive whilst we're at Aquinas and we offer a whole variety of different enrichment opportunities ranging from sport challenge yourself in terms of things like Duke of Edinburgh or sort of skill-based um, uh, enrichment opportunities. Uh, if you um, are also interested in maybe um, progressing on to a top university, Russell Group University, so to speak, or Oxford, Cambridge, as well as higher or degree level apprenticeships, we've got a high achievers programme for anyone interested to, to develop through, through that sort of means and ways, as well as things such as more specialist areas. So we've got a medics, battery, dentistry program for any students interested in that and we've got dedicated staff coordinators ranging from the medics coordinator to healthcare and as well as ourselves we do things like tomorrow's teachers as well as tomorrow's engineering so it's a whole overall package and just to kind of conclude a little bit it's to to take your time to have a look at the different environments to really do make use of those open events and to check out the websites also most importantly to keep in touch and contact us if you've got any queries that's really good advice and I suppose the I suppose the summary for that is it's different for each student isn't it that that's the message to get across to go and fact find at this stage and ask lots of questions about that um, kind of rounder package yes for some students it will be looking at what subjects are you best at what subjects do you enjoy it might be exploring new subjects it's certainly having an eye on what that next phase is at 18 plus is it university? Is it degree apprenticeship? Is it employment? Is it a particular career path that narrows your options a little bit? But as you say, it's that wider thing of the location, 
the pastoral support, the careers programmes and all of the additional facilities and opportunities that college life can offer. So it's not a straightforward process, is it, narrowing down that decision? Um, what about entry requirements? Because that can sometimes make a big difference between colleges, can't it? So if we're going on to study A level in a subject that we've already done at GCSE, what do we need to be aiming for grades wise? Where's the cutoff? Yeah, and uh, I guess that could be, again, it's that kind of additional research with what the different colleges and the certain entry requirements. Team. For us at Aquinas College, it's uh, six GCSEs, uh, at least a grade four, uh, English and maths, and that could really keep doors open, so to speak. Uh, and then there'll be additional entry requirements depending on the types of um, level three courses, um, for example, maths and uh, other kind of um, courses that are a bit more demanding compared to level two. So again, the information's on our website and we've got a whole list of different entry requirements as well as advice towards the bottom of the page in terms of maybe if you want to study, uh, we've got two types of business. So we've got A-level and B-tech. That's not necessarily recommended because the content is is quite similar. So again, it's to, to kind of go into every uh, college website, check out entry requirements and again, contacting colleges directly. I'm sure the uh, inquiries team, admissions team are, are more than happy to, to help with that. Sure, that's really useful. Thank you. So it's slightly different for each place. So the best advice is to check on the specific college website to make sure you know that. Um, now, we've had a quick question that's submitted in the chat from Mohammed, which is a really good one, actually. So again, if you've got a question for tonight's panellists, pop it in that Q&A box. You can do so anonymously if you wish. Uh, but they've asked a couple of questions. Um, so first of all, how many colleges can you apply for maximum? Um, so we're going to come on to Danny, I think, now, if that's OK at Loretto to just talk us through a little bit about this application process. So we'll come on to any specific areas that Mohammed has asked that we don't cover in a second. But could you just perhaps explain to us what that application process looks like? So when you have narrowed it down a little bit and you, you've made your decision making process, you've decided on a couple of different colleges or a couple of different routes that you'd like to apply for. What does that look like um, and what should happen next? Yeah, great. Um, good evening, everyone, again. So applying with uh, with us, and I'll talk you through my process, but obviously all the colleges are going to be largely similar. Um, and whenever you're applying for anything, the, the best thing is that you are as well informed as you can be. So John's take John's advice, do all the research and make sure you you've created a long list, which now you're trying to narrow into a shorter list so you can you can make a, your best application. So you can download those. Most of us have been into your schools and presented to some of your schools. Maybe if we haven't, download our um, application from the website. That's the first thing that you do. Um, now, if you come into Loretto, make sure you select your school when you download your, your application form. Uh, so you get a barcode uh, on that. And that's important. I'll, I'll tell you about that in a moment. Um, and when you're completing that, it's all the regular information that we need to know about you um, uh, and the easy information, I suppose, that you can fill in on any application form. Um, and the, 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 the really um, important bits are about the things that we won't necessarily know immediately about you. And so uh, we ask for a personal statement or a, you know, a, a supporting information about you. Um, and it's it's it should be easy to write because you know yourself best. So you need to be writing about the things that um, you're doing that might not have been showcased in your uh, basic information. So we want to know why you want to come to the particular college that you've applied for. You know, we want to know why you want to come to Loretto or um, Aquinas or Zavari. We want to know that. Um, and then secondly, talk about your subjects. Talk about why you've thought about that. And going back to the research that John was talking about, maybe have a think about those reasons. Um, we have a lot of uh, students uh, who, you know, sometimes they come to us and they say, I want to be a lawyer, an accountant, a dentist, a doctor. But maybe they haven't thought about the, you know, the actual specifics of that job and what that job actually demands and the skills that it demands. So think broader than just a job. Think about the skills that you're going to be doing and also try and push away the noise of those subjects that it doesn't matter if they don't match. It's OK. What does that what does matching mean anyway? Joyful study, please. Choose the subjects you love unless there's an absolute route that you have to take. 
choose the things that most excite you because we work harder at the things we love. It's just that's, that's what we do. Um, so when you put those applications, uh, the, the subjects down and you put your personal statement down, tell us all the wider things. You might be a prefect at school. You might have volunteered at a, um, a homeless shelter. You might have gone and led on a project or you've done a presentation at school that's made you stand out. You might have read a book that's of wider interest to you that's really illuminated your opinion on geography, which is why you want to come and study geography. It, just make sure that you're talking about the things that are about you, because all the admissions team from all the colleges read every single word of everything you send. I wouldn't make it more than a page. If you're going to do a personal statement, I wouldn't make it any more than a page. Uh, other panelists might have a different opinion on that, but I think a page is, is long enough. And then once you've, you're have you happy with your application form and you've, you think you've finished, you need to hand it to your school and they're going to complete a reference. And on that reference, they're going to include your predicted results. They're going to include your attendance and your punctuality. Um, it might be a comment about behaviour and effort and those sorts of things. And then it will be sent to us. Now, other colleges differ a little bit is that you can directly apply to them, but because uh, for ourselves, and I know for, for Zavarian as well, uh, there is a, a reference that needs attaching um, as well. So make sure uh, you've got all of that in one place. If, if it comes in without the reference, we'll just have to send it back again. So make sure you've got all that together. Um, I think I've covered everything there. Shall I answer a couple of Mohammed's questions? So, yeah, so he's, um, that was a really good answer. Thanks, Danny. I think that, that it's important to point out that there are nuances, that there are differences for every single college and sixth form. So you need to make sure that you're aware of their application form. And in response to one of the questions that Mohammed put, unfortunately, there isn't a central place to just submit one catch all application for everybody. It would be lovely if it was, but because every college and sixth form has got slightly different requirements and they process that application individually and take into account lots of different things not your, just your grades but all of those other factors as well it can't be standardized it needs to be personalized to that college unfortunately um, but there is one aspect that we've not addressed which is how many colleges can you apply for maximum is there a limit to it there isn't a limit uh, you're the only person that knows that information and we know that you are discerning enough to make sure that you are applying for the colleges that you wish wish to attend we would hope that you've seen every open day and you'll have attended them and you'll know which ones you want to apply to i would encourage you that you know for, for, for the sake of your own time only apply for the ones that you would really really wish to attend i think that's a that's a good use of an efficient use of your time and, and eventually our time as well um, but ultimately no you can apply to as, as many as you want to yeah. And again, they're all going to be different, but is there a rough deadline for um, applications? Yeah. yeah, largely there will be. Um, for us, you need to get into your school before December because we start making our our deadline is the 10th of January or early January. Um, and then from that point in January, we'll start interviewing in February or March. Um, if you've got an interview, you've got a place but it's just about getting to know you a little bit better and having those further conversations to help maybe um, move your uh, courses or thoughts about a particular study programme uh, in a particular direction. But ultimately, you want it out of the way by Christmas anyway, because it's a big year for you. You've got lots of other things to contend with, you know, and, and if you've come to the open days now anyway, it's a good thing to get out of the way. Perfect. Great. Thank you so much, Danny. We were leading on a little bit there um, onto what happens next after you've got your applications come in. So I'm going to come to Helen about that, um, if that's OK, because that's that's really crucial to know, isn't it? So applications, roughly, broadly speaking, gone in by Christmas. What happens next? When can people expect to roughly hear back? And what does that process look like? Again, it might be different for different colleges, but what would be your advice beyond that? OK, so the first thing that happens when your application comes to us and to any institution in our area is that the application is then reviewed by the sixth form team, sometimes by subject specialists. But largely the sixth form team, um, or the administrative team will look at that application and we review it firstly, obviously, against our admission criteria. Is the student likely to be attaining the grades required to come to our institution? And sometimes also against subject choices to make sure that that is something that works with a timetable and that's something that we can all offer um, in a realistic fashion. So that would be the first thing that happens. 
And then shortly after we've had a, a, a brief review of, of the candidate, um, we very often, most places I think, do invite students to interview. And that can be a little bit intimidating for young people to come to an interview. Um, and they might be asked thinking, well, why? Why do we have to do this? Well, there's a number of reasons, really. It's a great opportunity for the student to um, exercise their voice and be able to come and speak to um, professionals about what they would like to do at that sixth form centre. So it's a very much a two way process. Um, we might look at their personal statement that's just been mentioned um, and ask them some questions about that, get them to articulate the kinds of activities and different um, wider reading or different extracurricular activities that they've taken part in. Um, we often also get a chance to discuss with the student at this point, because interviews are around January, February, um, mock results. So lots of students come armed with their mock result um, um, grades from their different settings, academic settings. And we um, are able then to have a conversation with students because sometimes they don't always get what they want in those marks. And so we're able to say, oh, what happened here? And they're able to say, well, this happened. And, uh, and they're able to then explain to us, well, I'm going to extra sessions now. I'm having some intervention. I'm working really hard on my revision. I know where the gaps are in my learning. So the student gets to really show us actually what kind of learner they are likely to be. Um, and it's all done in a very friendly way. Um, it's not an interrogation, it's very much a conversation. Often as well at our setting, um, because obviously our students only do A-levels at Hazel Grove, um, we're able to um, offer additional courses to students to get a feel of whether they'd like to um, take those. For example, the extended project qualification, which we run. So students often say, oh, I don't really know much about that. So we're able to then explain to them what that is. We also offer for some subjects, for example, students who take psychology, but aren't taking, or geography, but aren't taking maths. We offer core maths, for example, um, which is a supplementary course which supports the statistical analysis required in those A-level subjects. So it gives us a chance to, to offer additional things to our students, our potential students, and give them a chance to think about what else they could do when they join a sixth form. We very much in that interview get a sense of the whole student, I think, um, and, and we can talk about their additional interests. If they are at our setting, if they are um, um, competitive sports people, then we can often put them onto our, what we call our elite pathway, which gives them potentially a reduced offer to come to our sixth form and gives them additional um, links and sports support through Loughborough University. So they get a chance to talk about themselves very much, not only just as a student, but who they are. Um, and also, very importantly, is a chance for them to ask us questions that, uh, as was mentioned before, they don't always get a chance to ask um, at a busy open evening or open day um, or as part of their application form. That's brilliant. Thanks, Helen. So, yeah, very much a two way process, as nerve wracking as that interview may feel, particularly because they might not have done that kind of interview scenario before. It's absolutely crucial opportunity for them to discuss those mock um, results, find out about other opportunities that they might not be aware of that are bespoke to kind of their application, um, but also to make sure, like another chance to make sure that they're making the right choice really, isn't it, about what comes next. And if, as Danny mentioned, if they get an interview, does that usually mean that they've been offered a place or will they find out about that after the interview? Does the interview affect that or? Yes, yeah, so sometimes, um... We have an offer ready, really, for the candidate once we've seen their application form. Um, but and but we always send that official offer out to them via post or email so that they they have a sense of the the gravity of, of what they're doing, applying to the next step in their academic journey. Um, but yeah, that's that's essentially what it is. We can't sort of guarantee because obviously. Um, for us, in our setting, the student does have to reach a certain entry requirement yeah. um, because we are an academic setting. We, we don't offer alternate courses um, yeah. to suit um, 
different grade set grade um, sequences so um, that's quite important to us so it's very much a con we would offer what we call as a university would a conditional offer yeah is what so it's conditional on those exam results that that's yeah. perfectly understandable okay yeah. and somebody has asked uh, within the within the chat about changing your mind so um can you change your mind at application stage before the interview happens or can you change your mind after the interview what are the opportunities if you suddenly maybe think oh, I, I'm, I've decided that I want to do different subjects altogether or maybe you don't get the mock results that you're expecting and you get higher in other areas and you want to have a rethink are there windows within that application to starting um, point of which you can um, vary things absolutely at all stages of that process they can get in touch with us post application in between interview they can mention it at the interview itself they can contact us following the interview following any further um, internal examination they might do um, students change their minds for a whole manner of reasons um, some students um, cha have changed their mind considerably between interview and results day because obviously results often um, impact quite heavily on what they choose um, and some students even change their mind after two weeks into starting sixth form. So very much students, um, where possible, we try and be flexible. I'm sure all the institutions here this evening do the same to try and accommodate the student to make them feel comfortable in their choices. But as has already been mentioned this evening, the student making the right choice for, and I love that phrase, joyful learning, is absolutely key to, I'm sure, to every institution here this evening. Perfect. Good stuff. Thank you very much indeed, Helen. I know that there's been quite a few questions in the chat. I will come to them. Maybe it's because we're going to talk about that in a second, but do please keep those questions coming in. I'm going to move to Neil now. We've discussed decision making, we've discussed applications, we've discussed the interview stage. What I want to ask a little bit about to you, Neil, is, is maybe a question that wasn't on the list that we talked about in advance. But actually, we've, we've reached that point now where we've been along to interviews and we've got several of these potentially conditional offers. Offers. Do we need to act at that point? Do we need to provide a provisional acceptance or do we just sit on those offers and wait for results day? What, what kind of happens after that process? So in terms of provisional acceptance, certainly at Tudor Lamar Apple College, we look to really make sure that we've gone through that full advice and guidance, that we've been through the opportunity for the students to come in on the open day talk to the teachers really seek all the information they need for those courses and then ultimately for A levels where you need to choose those three courses as a start point of course things can change we know that so I think ultimately we would look to try to get you to a point where we have three certainly firm choices and that you would then be looking to accept those choices initially and we know of course things might change as, as time moves on so certainly we would look to do that to you Marple yes yeah. Can you accept more than one place? At the college or at other colleges? At multiple colleges. I think the reality is, uh, it was covered earlier, the, the number of colleges you can choose to apply to and of course then accept places um, is entirely up to the individual. I think you would, you would, you would, you only apply to the ones that you feel that you would go to ultimately but definitely I think there may be the time where you may be not quite sure location traveling the, the offer at each of those colleges and it may depend on the results in the in the summer ultimately for which your your choice may be so I think the answer to that would be yes but I think in, in your mind and, and students will, will have a clear sort of indication of where they they may feel the best place for them will be Sure, good advice there. OK, so talk us through then what actually happens on results day. So I've been in the fortunate position as a father this year to go through this process and I know um, the students and the parents that are listening, there's an awful lot of choices to make over the next 12 months. There's going to be some hard work for those results, certainly in the summer uh, and a lot of decisions to make in that in that time. Results day itself, the schools will let you know the details for collection of your results. And so once you have that slip and once you've found the courage to open that envelope and, and finally find your results, um, the college themselves will have probably given you um, the information about what happens next. So for us at Chila Marple College, 
we will have written to you in July. You'll have the information. You'll have a day and a time to come in for enrolment. We like to do our enrolment on a personal level. So everybody is in, invited in individually. And so there'll be a day and time slot for you to come in and to have a conversation and work through that enrolment process. If everything's gone really well, I think that's you know great. That'll be a very straightforward step-by-step -step process. But if that's not the case and things haven't quite gone to plan or actually have gone better than you thought and you may have results that have caused you to think about choices that you might need to make in terms of unexpected good results maybe then uh, conversations about uh, the changing program maybe the maybe the thing so we will invite you in you'll come in you'll have a personal conversation with the curriculum area one of the a-level teachers in our enrollment team will go through the step-by-step -step process and walk you through and, and give you any opportunity really for final advice and guidance on those courses if there are any last minute late sort of amendments or decisions on programme. Okay, so if you get the results that you need that are based on your conditional offer, you should get some kind of email or communication direct from the college or sick form, that's right, yeah? We do it on a personal level. So I know some colleges ask for you to upload those, those results and they have on, on online platforms uh, and portals that you will use for that. For us, You'll come in and you'll be accepted on the day for your enrollment um, meeting that you'll be set day and time. Okay. And so we'll work through that process, whether you've got the results you need or whether you um, haven't got those results and you need to have a conversation. So we will do those on the day. OK, so if you don't get the results that you need, you've got a conditional offer. It said that you needed to get certain grades and you've missed those. I think that panic really does set in for both the student and the parent about what are our options now. So what should be their first point of call in that scenario? Is it to speak to the school and get some advice from, from their careers advisors there? Or is it to get on the phone and speak to those colleges and sick forms and say, you know, will you still let me in or, um, you know, what else can I do? What 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 would you advise? Well, I think the, the good news in the morning, the schools are available and they're open and they've got some of their advisors available. So if the school have those um, those people in place and the opportunity for you to do that, I think that's probably a, a good first port of call to have that conversation. Take a few deep breaths, don't panic and just relax and, and, and try, start to work through those other options that you may be able to look at. The college themselves will be able to help and support, and we certainly have our careers advisors on hand from 10 o'clock on, on results day through the results um, and enrollment process. So there will be people at the colleges on hand, will provide that opportunity. Sometimes students want to come in because they're really not sure what's gonna happen next if they haven't quite met the entry criteria for, for some of the subjects that they maybe really want to study. And so therefore we can walk them through that and talk them through the process. It depends what subjects they've applied for because some have much higher entry criteria than others. So the science and the maths in particular, the STEM subjects tend to have higher entry criteria. We certainly do at Cheel and Marple College. And so it may be a case that in some um, opportunities you may be able to substitute one of those courses, for example, a science subject with an alternative subject. So we've got some alternative academic qualifications coming on board in 2025 and so it may be that they can take another subject similar to a science like a medical science or an applied science and they'll be able to make their program study up with that type of subject uh, as a substitute or it may be that they need to have a broader conversation about what other opportunities there might be for them. Yeah, no, that's a really good response. So there's no closed doors. There's just different options. Um, I think that's good advice. Don't panic on the day. We have had a few specific questions about not getting the grades, either predicted grades for applications or on results day itself. I'm going to come back to those at the end because I think that it's probably different for all the different colleges and people want a firm answer on that. So we'll come back to that in a second. I just want to move on now to Olivia at Zavarian to talk a little bit about where um, Neil was finishing off there in terms of that enrolment process because I think that's really important as well, isn't it? So what does that actually look like uh, for yourself and, and just generally in terms of the enrolment on, on the day after you've got your results results um, and kind of that week one term one what is that you know starting sixth form process look like yeah thanks Caroline so enrollment really is that the final stage of, of the application process following GCSE results day and it's it's where students get to officially join their chosen college and get ready for the start of term 
Now, enrolment will look slightly different depending on the, the college itself, but it is essentially a chance for students and their parents really to to ask any final questions and to get ready for that that first day that first week at, at college whether that's sorting in their it and id cards processing bursary information and um, in most cases enrollment typically takes up to around an hour it's usually done on campus and um, although some colleges will give you um options to do some elements of it online um, and it's essentially a, a short interview with with a subject teacher in most cases to really firm up those, those subject choices. And it'll be really important that the students take along their GCSE results with them so that we can have those conversations. You know, it's very easy if they've met that entry requirement, we can get you straight onto those courses of choice. But if not, like Neil mentioned, there will still be an option there for you and an offer there for you. It just might be kind of adjusting those subject choices dependent on the grades. And again, kind of as a, you know, colleges will will guide you through that process nearer the time. You know, we'll send out those invite letters with specific dates and times. And the student doesn't need to have made a decision on what college they want to, to study at really until they get those results and and they they're attending those enrollment appointments you know so it is important to keep options open when when initially applying to the different colleges and and we know that lots of students their parents they're gonna worry all year about what happens if something goes terribly wrong and and those results aren't what was expected on results day and you know it's really easy for us to sit here and say don't worry don't panic but there will be a college and a course there for every student. Um, and it is about finding the right fit. And we are there. Your school careers advisors are there to help guide you through that and to offer support when you pick up those results. Certainly for us, we would encourage you to still attend your enrolment appointment and have a chat with us, have a chat with our teachers and our careers team. They are the experts. They will be able to really help you make a decision on, on what is the best route for you at that point. Now, in terms of kind of week one at college, it's typically in most cases an induction week. So it's about you getting to further know everything you need to know about that college and um, getting to know your teachers and find out more about wider learning opportunities. I know John mentioned earlier lots about MDV and Oxbridge programmes and other enrichment. There'll be chances to potentially attend freshers fairs and 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 do different activities to to really allow students to meet new people and make new friends um, and then again all of term one so from September right up until Christmas it's very much about getting you settled in those chosen subjects starting to assess where you're at with those A levels you know it is a big step up from from GCSEs but there's lots of support in place. Great. That was going to be my next question, actually. So once you put your pen down on that final exam and you've got that kind of waiting game to get your results in, is there anything else that students can be doing to get ready for September? A-levels are obviously a big step up from GCSEs. They are studying the same subjects or new subjects at a far greater depth, fewer subjects, more time to focus on them. What could they be doing over that summer period if they're so inclined to make sure that that transition goes really smoothly and that they're ready to hit the ground running in September? I think it's really important after, you know, you've sat your GCSEs to go and enjoy part of that summer. Um, as soon as you get to the first few weeks in college, you know, you will be getting work to do. You will be having to do more independent study. Go out, enjoy the summer holidays. All of the colleges will will share further information with you. That might be about how to prepare stationary lists, reading lists ahead of term. Um, you know, that will give you a, a, a kind of a, a step forward if you if you want it. But, you know, the first few weeks are there for us to to get you prepared for college. So, you know, it's nothing you would need to worry about at this stage or over the summer. Good. That's nice to hear. Uh, a, a good incentive for when everything's over and done with. So those were all the big questions that we wanted to cover tonight, the big topics. So thank you all for tackling those. But we do have some specific questions that have come through on the chat. We've got about 15 minutes left to run through those now. So if any of you have still got questions that are unanswered for specific um, colleges or sixth forms, now's your window. You may not get a chance to answer, ask these questions to them before you submit your applications. Do ple please keep them coming in the Q&A. Um, so the first one is, 
Um, how many subjects do we need to opt for maximum? So I'm going to ask that one to you, Danny. Can you fill us in on that? Is there a minimum and maximum? Yeah, so it will depend on the course choices that you're doing, but ultimately you need a programme that's going to fill three blocks. So it's three subjects is the, is, the, is is what's there. So if you're doing an extended diploma, for instance, which is equivalent to three A-levels, so if you get a triple distinction star in that, it's the same as getting three A-stars. Um, you need something that's going to fill up three subjects. Universities want three. We do have a handful of students to do four subjects. Often these are students who might be doing further maths because they're an engineer or they might be doing a language, um, but they are rare. And also what I would say with that is that in the time that you're spending in lesson for that fourth subject, what you're not then doing is revising for one of the other three subjects. And those are the three that you do. And obviously the aim, of course, is to get the highest grades. Better to have three A stars than four Bs. Not that B grades are anything to be unhappy about, but you get the sense that I'm, I'm getting at here. And there are yeah. other programmes that um, have been mentioned, you know, um, before um, you heard about the EPQ, the extended project, which is worth half an A level. And you could do that in your second year, you know, with us at Loretto. So three and a half. Do three, do them well, get involved with all the enrichments that you can possibly do and fill your time with a blend of curriculum study and great opportunities in enrichment. That's the best way of, of, of getting through college. Yeah, I think that's really, really sound advice there. It is quite common. We do see a lot of questions coming in from parents saying, should we choose four and then drop the one that we don't like? What's your thoughts on that? Uh, we do have some students in the first couple of weeks who really can't decide between them, which is why it's so important that you attend the open days and uh, maybe the taste days if you signed up as well to have a sense of what that's about. Um, read up about it. There's lots of uh, things online that you can sort of watch and get a sense of. Um, but ultimately, sometimes we sign up for things and it just doesn't it just doesn't fit. And as John was saying, uh, I think earlier that, you know, there's a there's a there's a flex and opportunity to move around. Um, should you need to, you just got to explore those options. I wouldn't just say, um, let's just do four and I'll drop one for everybody. I don't think that's a, a, a would be the most sensible approach. It's about doing the research and asking the questions first, making a step into something. And if it's not quite right, then moving over. Yeah, brilliant. Thanks for that, Danny. A couple of questions for you that have come in, John. I'm going to bung these together if that's all right. So somebody's asked, what subjects do you think are difficult at Aquinas? And somebody else has asked for Aquinas, how many courses need to be chosen? A bit of an overlap there, but if you could address those, that'd be great. Yeah, so uh, for the latter in terms of the number of, of courses, uh, again, echo um, Danny and just the um, three courses would be sufficient because of um, mentioning before in terms of that's what universities would want to see three level three courses there are obviously uh, times where you could do an additional fourth but that's very uh, you know it is more exceptional these days however there are additional courses that are on offer so if you were to do uh, a level maths for example you could do further maths as well um, you could do uh, also additional ones such as Japanese GCSC as well as we do an EPQ as well extended project qualification uh, three doing well make sure because of the content and the the the, the sort of sizes would be uh, uh sort of that recommended uh in terms of difficulty i guess that's quite dependent on on yourself i mean i guess in terms of the certain types of level three courses a levels uh, they have um uh, challenges as well as uh, opportunity in terms of how you like to express yourself if you feel you're someone who, who is uh, sufficient in terms of essay writing as well as examinations and A-levels may lend themselves to you more. However, we offer BTEC qualifications as well. Uh, so for example, we do apply business and, and A-level a business that I mentioned earlier, but also like for example, law, uh, as well as other different types of BTEC level three courses. And that could be uh, more coursework based. So depending on what your style is, what your preference, that could be something uh, to consider. Again, you know, echoing my colleagues in terms of the levels of support, hopefully at the secondary schools with career support. We do have an open day coming up as well. So on Saturday, we've got our final open day uh, starting from 10 a.m. It could be a great idea to come and see and talk to members of staff and students just to get that insight. And again, you know, echo in terms of other colleges, contacting them and getting that sort of advice uh, as well. 
Great. So good good point there, John. There's still an opportunity to attend Open Days if you want to. So yours is on Saturday. Danny, have you got another one at Loretto? Uh, we've done two now uh, over the last two weekends and we do have a taste today coming up. If you were here at Open Day and have signed up for that, that's great. But um, that's 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 all for us now. OK, Helen, what about at Hazel Grove? Hi, we're the 6th of November in the evening, um, so please come along. Um, you'll have a chance as well to attend some seminars with subjects so that might give you a little feel um, for what it might be like to study those subjects at A-level. Brilliant. Neil, Cheadle and Marple. So we had ours last Saturday for our open day, so that was our big open day. Our next one's going to be in March, so we've got an evening in March that students can attend. And if they have applied and they're set on their courses, we'll also invite them in for a welcome day in July. So they'll come in for the day and they'll experience all their subjects, tutors and, and you know, the discussion around the wider sort of offers that we have at, at college and those additional subjects like the EPQ um, and the, uh, the further math type courses. Right. Liv, what about Severian? Yeah, unfortunately, ours have been and gone over the last few weekends, but we do have Taster Days coming up just after half term. So everyone that attended an open day will have had an invite to Taster Days now as well. That's perfect. So I'll just ask you then, if somebody is unable to make the open evenings, does it affect your chance of getting in? No, it not doesn't. all. <laughs> no, that was to, to you, Liv, if you can just comment on that for me. Yeah, no, not at all. Um, open days are your your chance to find out what you need to know about the, the different colleges. Um, you know, it, it's great if you've had the opportunity to see us before you apply, but it doesn't go against your application if you haven't. OK, perfect. Thank you. We've got a question that's directed to Hazel Grove about only offering A-levels. Are entry requirements specific to the courses that I am wishing to complete? higher than in a college setting. We've already covered that one. Best to check on the website. It's different for absolutely everywhere. So have a look on the website about those um, entry requirements for there. Um, I'll maybe just ask you a quick one, Neil. For art-related subjects that require a portfolio, when and how do people submit this? So if you apply for our A-levels, what we have is we'll, we'll look at the entry um, requirements we'll check the the application and then with those types of subjects we do offer an interview and an opportunity then to come in and have a look at that portfolio with the te with the teachers in the subject area so it's really with the portfolios in particular the opportunity to interview is going to be the opportunity for those students Great. OK, fantastic. Somebody's asked if you can arrange personal viewings for open evenings. I think you can if you get in touch with the colleges. But as I say, it's no real disadvantage if you've not been able to go along for one. And lots of them have videos and virtual tools on their websites. So maybe start with that and see if you've got specific questions. Someone else has asked, is it a benefit for year 10 students to go along to open days? You can do if you wish, but lots of those have already taken place and you will have ample time next year to go along to those. So don't worry too much. Um, let me take that one off. So we've got a lot of questions coming through last minute, so I'm trying to get through as many as possible. Question for Loretto. Um, do you have a waiting list for your taste today, which is full? Uh, we 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 have got a waiting list. We have got a list. Um, we, we're keeping your information, uh, but we are full at the moment. Uh, we've we've been uh, very very popular. <laughs> so yeah, if your name is there, that's great. But again, if you don't come to the days today, it doesn't affect your application chances either. It's just um, another opportunity to see and look around the college. Hi. Um, see how many more we've got time for now. Quickly, um, for Aquinas. Can you apply for three vocational courses? And roughly, someone else has asked, what's the difference between an A-level and a level three course? If you can just explain that for us, John. Uh, yeah, so um, we've got students who are doing three uh, BTEC courses. Um, so they are largely singular, so uh, equivalent of one A-level, so three BTEC different types. And again, that can progress on to higher education, university apprenticeships, but again, the caveat is ensure you do your research and double check if, for example, universities, just contact them, general inquiries. Um, in terms of uh, mixing them up as well, you can certainly do that as well. So you can do a mixture of A-level and BTEC as part of the three. So depending on how you prefer to, to um, study courses, then 
uh, that's certainly something to do. Again, advice and guidance is available uh, in the college, either during our open event on Saturday or contacting at a later date, as well as information on the website. And sorry, just to clarify, obviously GCSE, um, that's level two. Level three um, is um, A level and B tech. So A level and B tech, uh, so long as they equate to the same number, uh, one B tech included, you know, uh, one A level. That's what I meant, sorry, by level three. So hopefully that's cleared up a little bit. Great. Right. We've had about another 10 questions within the chat that we don't have time to respond. So I just wanted to reassure you, if you have submitted a question within the chat, we've not quite got round to it tonight. They've been some great questions. One about medical requirements for students, others about ones that have had time off and how they can overcome that. Ones about different mixes of course and specific subjects. What we will do is we will make a list of all of those questions. We will ask our guest presenters tonight to comment on those and, and write their responses responses which they very kindly agreed to do in previous years I haven't asked them this year but I'm sure they will do again and what we will do is we will publish those on the Stockport Jobs Match website within the next seven days um, so we will send out a link if you booked on via Eventbrite you've joined us tonight on team we've got your email address so we will send you an email with the link to all of those questions and some responses and also a recording of tonight if you want to watch it back but we had a really nice question submitted right at the start tonight which which I'm not sure if that was one of our panellists submitting that question secretly, but it was a really great one that said, would it be possible to just have kind of a, a 30, 60 second recap on what each of the colleges have got to offer to allow them to kind of sell themselves a final pitch for why we should choose them. So that's a really great way for us to finish tonight. So I'm going to have to be strict with you all and cut us to time because we've got six of you and five, well, six of you and four minutes left. So if you can just say in a nutshell, why they should um, opt for you, a couple of kind of maybe three selling points that you've got that you think that they should take into account, that would be great. John, I'm going to come to you first. Uh, okay, so um, so Aquinas College, um, uh, we believe in, in nurturing uh, the whole student, so our commitment to our pastoral care kind of sets us apart, I feel. Uh, we foster um, a supportive, inclusive environment where students is valued as an individual. I think our pass all care is second to none, uh, at the, not at the expense of, sort of our academic success. I mean, with our uh, Aquinas College, the fact that we're a Catholic college as well, so we drive our ethos through everything we do, uh, and we support students through a variety of different curriculum offers, as well as our enrichment programmes to uh, be more, I think is our, title, is our slogan. Brilliant, that's great. Thanks, John. Helen? Okay, so we are very much a highly academic sixth form um, and our students come to us because they want to achieve their to their potential, to the highest possible potential and to make those very competitive applications to, um, to elite institutions post 18. And our sixth form is all about nurturing that academic profile of those individuals to make sure that they can make be competitive and they have those voices that can sell themselves to those those institutions later later on that said we offer an extensive elective program we have an extensive what we call life after loris program which supports students in those applications and whilst this all sounds um quite heavyweight in some respects we're very much a family we are a sixth form community at Hazel Grove. Our students are looked after um, superlatively with regard to their pastoral care and with regard to nurturing the whole person so that when they leave us, they have the opportunities to do whatever it is that they would like to do in the future. Right, thanks, Helen. Neil? Thank you. I think we we certainly have all the, the range of A-levels and those are the additional courses and support around the curriculum area for the students. But I think we, we really pride ourselves in being inclusive. We have those students that get the highest grades and go on to do medicine, but we also have those students that come in and really develop as A-level students and go on to university. We have a very personalised approach right through into our enrolment with the interviews and the um, invites onto site. You're a name, not a number. It's a community that we um, have mutual respect, it's really at our colleges. We support every student uh, as they come through to help develop them. And our links with industry and that wider development beyond the curriculum, I think really sets us apart. 
Brilliant, thank you. Olivia? Yeah, so I think you'd be joining a, a really welcome and safe and supportive community with us at Zavarian. You know, if you work hard, you will get those great results. We have excellent facilities, an extensive enrichment programme. Over 80% of our students are progressing to their first choice destination, you know, so we're setting you up for your next steps post 18. Your learning really will have no limits with us. Great, thank you. And lastly, Danny? Uh, yeah, so... It, it, I'm going to go back historically with us. We've been, you know, Loretto on this site in Manchester since 1851, and it was founded by this amazing nun called uh, Mary Ward, and she believed in education for everyone. It was illegal to educate girls way back in the 17th, 16th century, and she did it anyway. She walked all the way to Rome and asked the Pope for permission. He said no. She went back and did it anyway. And that notion of education that can be for everyone, that is inclusive, and that's why our intro requirements are the way they are, four fours and two sixes, because we have a course for everyone because everyone should uh, aspire to uh, success so we want to put you to be the best version of yourself um so do come and join us to do so brilliant thank you so much so we, we're just about on time everybody which leaves me to say thank you very much for joining us this evening i'm sure that you'll want to pass on your thanks to all of our panelists tonight for giving up their evening and providing some real insights into some of those questions those burning questions that we might have following open days before we press go on those applications um i've been your host caroline Patton. i am back tomorrow night to do another evening all about um t levels BTECs and apprenticeships and other level three qualifications. So if you've joined tonight, um, but you still want to know a little bit more about what else you can do, we've got another range of colleges to joining us tomorrow evening um, geared towards that vocational route. So do please book your tickets for that. We've also got a third event on Thursday evening that looks at what's next next. So what actually happens at 18, going along to university, but also all of the other alternatives. So if some of your decisions about what to do after GCSEs hinge on really what to do for either a degree, a degree, degree apprenticeship, HNC, HND or future employment, we'll be joined by employers as well. So do please book your tickets for all of those events. I hope you found tonight useful. There is a whole host of other information and resources available to you on the Stockport Jobs Match website. So that includes career guides, listings for all the different colleges, the prospectus with all of their um, open dates if they're still yet to happen and their contact details if you need to get in touch with them any anyway, as well as information about what happens on results day and some fantastic day in the life videos and bite-sized videos, some planning tools um, and some different checklists to help with that decision-making process. So be sure to go on that website, stockport-jobsmatch.co.uk. Otherwise, thank you very much and enjoy the rest of your evening. Thanks, everybody.